This is Look West, a podcast from California's Assembly Democrats. Hi, thanks for clicking on the Look West podcast. I'm Alexis Manzanilla with part two of our visit with new members of the Assembly Democratic Caucus. As you heard in part one, we asked each of the new members to introduce themselves, tell us a bit about their background in their districts, as well as why they went into politics, their top legislative priorities, and if they feel California is still a leader for the rest of the country. We met eight new members in part one. In this episode, we'll meet eight more, including Dr. Jasmine Baines, the first Sikh and the first woman to represent her district in the state legislature, Rick Chavez Zabur, who decided to run for office at the request of his ailing sister, Pilar Schiavo, a single mom dedicated to helping the working class, Don Addis, a diehard fan of America's favorite pastime, baseball, Dr. Corey Jackson, who got his start in politics as the student member of his local school board, Gail Pellerin, a former journalist who loves the San Francisco Giants, Liz Ortega, a mother of four who loves Chuck Taylors, and Damon Connolly, whose grandpa was a big influence on his interest in public service. Let's begin with Dr. Baines. I grew up in Delano, um, never thought I'd ever become a doctor, never thought I'd ever make it to the assembly. I guess for a lot of rural areas in California, the reality is, is that even in the future for us? Um, And we grow up thinking, Well, it'd be great if we graduate high school, um, but life has its way of making you into a fighter. It has its way to teach you how to do things like be the new assembly member representing your hometown. So Kern County is an area that has some of the highest poverty rates, some of the biggest food insecurities, 65,000 kids that suffer from food insecurities, some of the highest illiteracy rates, but as an area that has the least amount of resources. I remember when I was a child growing up in Delano, I got sick. I got to see a doctor within three to four hours. The reality today is there are even less resources in that area. If, I get, if my child gets sick today, it takes two to three months to make an appointment with the pediatrician. The overflow in the urgent cares, I work in the urgent care there in Delano, the overflow in the urgent cares is overwhelming. Communities like Delano, communities like in Bakersfield, Kern County, deserve more resources. We introduced our first bill today. It's a fentanyl state task force to get specialists at the table. I, in my world of family medicine addiction, have been fighting fentanyl use for the past four to five years. I'm finally at the table, finally introduced my first bill. I get to work in right away. It's going to be a state task force made up of specialists and experts in the field, law enforcement, prosecutors, district attorneys, and addiction specialists and members of our school board to make sure that our resources are out there and we properly address the fentanyl crisis. Hi, I'm Rick chavez and I'm the new member of the California Assembly representing the 51st District. There's so much to do in the 51st District. I mean, it runs from Larchmont Village and Hancock Park all the way through the, um, L- the core of the LGBTQ plus community in Hollywood and West Hollywood. Uh, then we've got the iconic community of Beverly Hills, as well as Westwood, as I said, and UCLA, and then Santa Monica, one of our key uh, beach communities in Southern California. So I grew up in New Mexico, uh, grew up in a farm community south of Albuquerque, uh, the same community where my mother, Erlinda Chavez, and her family uh, lived for generations. Um, it was a farm community. Um, I happened to be the first uh, person in my uh, this rural farm high school class that um, uh, went to an Ivy League college, uh, was one of only 10 members of our class that went to college at all. Uh, another was my sister. Um, so it was a very different place uh, than, the, than the district that I represent now, uh, you know, which of course is uh, such a, uh, an iconic district here in California. Well, you know, my dad was a, an activist. He always thought that uh, government could do better for the people. He wasn't a politician or a government official himself. Um, when I was a little kid, you know, he was always active supporting candidates that he thought 
um, were um, honest and would help um, you know protect our community. I was sort of his sidekick. Um, you know, I'd run around with him and I'd pass out palm cards at the polls, and I always thought I'd do something in government service. Um, but then when I um, started coming out as an openly gay man, um, you know, this remember it was in the '80s, and there weren't openly gay officials either appointed or elected anywhere. And so um, decided that I would really do something else and became a lawyer. Uh, but then in the 1980s, became politically active again as many of my friends and colleagues became ill during the HIV crisis. Um, and so that's when I became politically active again. And the decision to run for office this time um, was actually at the suggestion of my sister who passed away in September of uh, 2020 um, after she was uh, diagnosed with ALS. And I made that promise to her, um, made the decision to run for office shortly thereafter. And, um, you know, and that, that was what made me decide to run this time. But, you know, it makes sense. I've been an advocate for social change in the environmental space and in the LGBTQ civil rights space for many years. Um, I believe that public service is a noble calling and that that is the best way that we all have to sort of improve the lives of people in our communities. And that's why I ran and I'm uh, ready to get to work for the people of the 51st district. Well, obviously we have to tackle uh, the crisis that we're facing related to both housing and homelessness. And so that will be a key um, thing that I'll be working on together with my colleagues and uh, with the governor and with the new mayor of Los Angeles. Um, also, uh, as you know, I'm a, a very focused on really addressing uh, the crisis of climate change with the boldness that our children and our planet deserve. Um, also want to improve the social safety net for our most vulnerable. We need to protect education. I'm proud to be representing uh, UCLA and Westwood as part of my district, as well as Santa Monica College. Um, and then also um, continuing to work on the civil rights and social justice work, uh, protecting not only the LGBTQ plus community, but all vulnerable communities here in California. We always used to say that at Equality California that um, that California is the beacon of hope for the rest of the country. Uh, we always pass the first bills on everything uh, to, to achieve progressive change in California first, and it creates the model for every other state in the country and for our federal government. And so with respect to uh, LGBTQ uh, rights, civil rights, social justice, with respect to climate change, we are the beacon of hope for the rest of the country, and I take that responsibility very seriously as I move into this new role. Hi, I'm Assemblywoman Pilar Schiavo from Assembly District 40, which includes Santa Clarita and the Northwest San Fernando Valley. I was born and raised in Sonora in the foothills near Yosemite. Um, I grew up, you know, swimming in the rivers and lakes and hiking in the mountains. Um, it's one of the reasons that I ended up in the district where I am, um, next to the Santa Susana Mountains, where I love to go hiking with my daughter. Um, there's lots of big, huge, our district has big, huge, gorgeous red boulders um, that people can climb around. And so I call it to get my daughter outside. I say, let's go rock climbing. <laughs> we go jump around on some rocks and it's also hiking. Um, but she has a really good time doing that too. So uh, I went to Sonoma State University uh, as an undergrad in, in American Multicultural Studies. Uh, and then went to UMass Amherst for graduate school in labor studies and have been working for 20 years in the labor movement, um, organizing around good jobs, you know, benefits that people can depend on, retirement security, and, um, you know, growing up in a family that struggled, I wanted to make sure that we're fighting for people to make sure they can keep a roof over their head and provide for their families and have a good life. So, you know, growing up, my family really struggled. My dad was a logger when I was younger. My mom uh, waited tables. And, um, and then my dad got cancer uh, from Agent Orange in Vietnam. He worked on the planes that actually patched the bullet holes or, you know, from the, the, from the planes that sprayed Agent Orange. And so he would be drenched sometimes in Agent Orange. Um, fortunately, with the VA, he was able to um, get the treatment he needed, but we didn't have health care. And, um, and then he couldn't do that work of logging anymore, and so transitioned to being an electrician. And he and my mom had a small business, um, but it was during the recession of the early 90s in a small town, and so it was a very hard time to start a business. And so, 
you know, I remember lots of stressful conversations around the dinner table about whether or not he was going to get a job um, or had to bid low enough that he wouldn't make any money on a job just to get it. And so, um, you know, so we really, um, it really always felt unfair to me that my parents worked so hard and didn't have a lot to show for it. And so that drove me to, to be in the labor movement, to fight for workers. Um, it's a very deep commitment of mine. I felt like our district really wasn't being represented in a way that could really, uh, the district could really could reap all of the benefits of the power of this office, of the assembly, and just saw change that needed to happen and being on the front lines of issues like homelessness um, that are impacting our community and seeing how broken the system was around solving that issue um, and making sure that, you know, we find real solutions and not just band-aids. It, it, it pushed me over the, the top to run for office, and I actually had to quit my job to run. Um, so it was very scary as a single mom to do that. But I know a lot of people have sacrificed a lot more to do good work um, for their community in the past, and it felt like uh, an opportunity I couldn't pass up, and I and, uh, was driven to really make sure that we have good representation in our district. It's one of the reasons I love this state, um, because it's so inspirational to be in a state where we can pass groundbreaking legislation that can be a model for other country or other states. And I think that on health care, especially, um, our state can really lead um, in guaranteeing health care and making sure people have health care when they need it and don't have to worry about whether or not they're going to go bankrupt. Um, so, you know, that's something I'm very passionate about, something I really want to fight for and something I think California is in a perfect position to be a national leader on. Well, hello, Central Coast. I'm Dawn Addis, your assembly member for Assembly District 30. That starts at the Santa Cruz Harbor and goes down to the southern San Luis Obispo County line. Uh, so we've got 200 miles of coastline, and I'm incredibly honored to serve you. I grew up in a small town coastal community in the uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, but we've lived in the district since 2001, raised our kids there, have been a school teacher and educational program developer for over 20 years there. So um, entering the assembly is the first time that I'm stepping away from that career, but also bringing the voice of educators with me to the state legislature. I came into politics really to serve the local community. Um, I was first, well, I founded and led the Women's March in, you know, 2016, 2017. And that was incredibly popular. We had 10,000 people come out in San Luis Obispo. I was recognized by uh, Congressman Slude Carbajal at the time, who invited me to President Trump's first State of the Union address, and that was very, very eye-opening and inspired me to come back home and get involved in a different way. I had done campaign work on the you know volunteer side of things, door knocking, phone banking, um, but decided to get involved with my own city. We had a number of issues there, including uh, housing issues, water access issues, climate issues that our city is facing as a coastal community. It's incredibly important to me and to the voters, the residents, and the visitors of the Central Coast of Assembly District 30 that we work to protect our coast, that we work to combat the climate crisis, that we increase housing, um, that we support folks with mental health needs in the entire community, that we solve homelessness, uh, and that we improve education. There's no shortage of issues, and I'm ready to get to work. California has uh, brave and bold new climate goals, but also action plans, I think, are uh, formulating and paired with those goals. We've been a leader when it comes to reproductive justice and reproductive care in terms of access to abortion. We've been a leader in terms of uh, supporting transgender children and people and their families. California is a place that people can come and feel safe and open and welcome. And we still face challenges. And so I think we have now a new class and a new opportunity with the legislature that we have coming in that we will absolutely still be a leader for the nation. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Corey Jackson and it's my honor to serve you in the state legislature to represent the 60th Assembly District. Very excited to make sure that we can serve the people of Moreno Valley, Paris, Hemet, and San Jacinto. 
I was born in South Central LA, but my parents moved us out to the Inland Empire. And so I grew up in a little city named Marie, uh, Rialto. So I grew up in Rialto and I was there from third grade until I was 30. Oh, wow. And then I had the pleasure of uh, purchasing my first home in Moreno Valley um, in the current district of the 60th. Um, and I've been there ever since. Well, you know, I started actually at an early age. Um, I really was raised by a village, and so um, I had the opportunity of being the student member on my local school board. Um, and there I was introduced to other elected officials, and I was one of those people who, if you asked me to volunteer, I always said yes. And I just met so many other different people. Um, and because of that, and because I started young, it's always been a part of what I realized, and that is that I'm not happy, I don't feel like I have a balanced life unless I'm serving. We have so many issues that we have to tackle. We know we have to tackle housing prices. We know we need to make sure that we expand childcare, and we have to deal with the crisis that is mental health. Uh, so many other issues for transportation and so many other things. Uh, but at the end of the day, I wanna make sure that you know that I have you um, in mind. I think number one is within our culture to, as a Western state, to be amongst the first on anything. We're not afraid to take risks here. And most importantly, we always want to make sure that we're on the cutting edge to tackle the most uh, biggest problems that our society and the nation and indeed the world has to, has to face. Um, and so if you want good ideas, if you want opportunities to see how things can be done, um, especially if you're one of those look back and see what happens first kind of folks, um, continue to look for California because uh, you're, you're continually see some big and new things coming your way. Hi, my name is Gail Pellerin and I'm the representative for the 28th Assembly District that includes parts of Santa Clara County and Santa Cruz County. I'm the first woman from Santa Cruz County to be elected to a state office. Well, I was born and raised in Southern California, Los Angeles, and we moved up to Orange County. I went to school at Cal Poly San Luis. It was the one and only university I applied to and got a degree in journalism and paid my own way through college because my parents did not believe women should be educated. So I was on my own at the age of 18, funding my college, working in restaurants and graduated on a Saturday. And I had been working for the Morro Bay Sun Bulletin and went to work full time with them on the Monday after graduation. And I thought, this is so easy just going to work and not having to balance school as well. So I quickly learned though that my, um, I have an opinion about things and I was sitting there covering, you know, board meetings or something going in governmental meetings. And I would think to myself, why don't they just do this? And so I decided I needed to be more on the policy side. So I got a job in a district office as a field representative and then moved up here to Sacramento where I worked for what was called the Speaker's Office of Majority Services. And uh, so it's full circle for me to be back here. And since I left the State Assembly, I uh, took a job in Santa Cruz County where I was the Chief Elections Official for 27 and a half years. I had the most beautiful district, I believe. We have redwoods, we have beaches, we have Silicon Valley, we've got you know, great wineries. And uh, there's just, it's, I really feel like the best and brightest folks in the state of California reside in this 28th Assembly District. I was working with local women's groups actually in Santa Cruz County, realizing that we had never elected a woman from Santa Cruz County to an office higher than countywide, which is one of the offices I held. And being a progressive county, we thought that's crazy. So I had my sights to set on running for this seat in 2024 when my predecessor, Mark Stone, was due to term out and he decided on the last day not to run for re-election. So everything got put into high gear and we leaped and took a leap of faith and started running and got elected. So issues that I wanna focus on, my family has been profoundly impacted by mental health. So that is something I wanna work on to make sure that everybody has access to affordable mental health care. Also housing is something that has plagued this district where we're needing to build more housing for low income people and as well as addressing our homeless situation. And finally, climate protections are so very important to make sure that we have a sustainable planet for future generations. I think the best and brightest minds reside in California. And if we can just continue to work together to build 
a, a, a state that takes care of people who are living here, making sure that people are working in our communities, can afford to live in our communities. Hi, my name is Liz Ortega, and I'm excited to be here as your new assembly member in District 20. So I was born in Mexico and my parents brought me to this country when I was three years old and I grew up in Oakland in the East Bay. I learned to speak English by the time I started kindergarten by watching soap operas with one of my aunts. So I learned General Hospital, All My Children Would Like to Live and uh, became the family's translator by the time I was in first grade because I got so good. Uh, one of the things my teachers would complain about me though would be uh, to say that I was very dramatic in class. I live in San Leandro, which is one, um, it's a beautiful city. Uh, we have a beautiful community of small businesses that are very, very diverse. It's actually one of the things that I love about the district that I represent. It's just a beautiful diversity when it comes to the people, to the food, to the entertainment, to the parks. It's just one of the most beautifully diverse communities that I could have the honor of representing. I ended up going into politics because I've actually been our community organizer my entire life mm -hmm. and represented 125,000 Alameda County workers, union members, uh, prior to running for office. And so I've seen the difference uh, in making sure that we have elected officials that understand the needs of the community and are ready and willing to stand up and fight for those differences. My legislative priorities will be making sure that we tackle the homelessness crisis, that we address climate change, and that we make sure that all of our communities are safe and ensure that we have quality education for all of our kids. I think California is one of the uh, greatest states in the world, and we absolutely are a model for other states to look at and will continue to do so. Uh, especially with Liz Ortega in the assembly. Hey everyone, this is Damon Connolly, uh, one of the new assembly members uh, from Assembly District 12, which covers Marin and Sonoma counties. So I've been a proud resident of the North Bay for about 25 years, uh, raised two daughters in San Rafael. They're now in their uh, 20s, hard to believe, uh, with my wife, Dawn. Uh, grew up in the East Bay, so I'm a lifelong uh, Bay Area resident. I went to UC Berkeley for college and law school, go Bears. I uh, started uh, my public, actually my first uh, passion was to become a lawyer. Uh, I was kind of a 12-year-old kid who had that goal and worked toward that and uh, had the opportunity to work for the California Attorney General's office for a number of years and started my own practice after that and also uh, launched a local public service uh, career on the school board when my two daughters were younger and again uh, going to my uh, passion toward public schools, public education. Uh, then served on the city council and then have uh, been a county supervisor for the last eight years. So about 18 years uh, total of local public service and really ran for the assembly to be the local voice, have that local perspective for our communities in Sacramento. A great um, influence on my life was my grandfather. Uh, he was an Irish immigrant, uh, kind of worked his way up through the post office, and um, he was he was a, a public servant in every sense of the word, very active in the community. Um, this was in an unincorporated part of the East Bay called San Lorenzo, and he, he effectively kind of became the de facto mayor. And then a really proud moment for us uh, back in those days, the postmaster of a town was actually appointed by the president of the United States. And in this case, he was appointed by JFK. Uh, so quite the story uh, for an Irish immigrant family. So definitely uh, an environmental focus, uh, tackling the climate crisis and some of the 
uh, ways that's really affected uh, my district as well as the state is around wildfire uh, risk and prevention. So, so going to be very much focused on that. Uh, drought, housing and homelessness issues are going to be uh, huge as well. Uh, and of course, uh, education, a key issue statewide. When you look at issues like climate change, uh, California has to be the leader nationally. I believe it is now, uh, but we can even further that. And that's not even the only issue where that applies. And what I uh, like to say is that within California, my district, the North Bay, can itself be a leader. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I kind of ran as the local voice uh, for that area. But part of that is really bringing uh, the ideas, the leadership, um, the creativity of our region uh, to the state capitol. And I think in turn, California needs to continue to step up and lead nationally as a thought leader, as um, uh, creating actual solutions to some of the major challenges our whole country is facing right now. You can learn more about all of these new Democratic Assembly members by checking out their official social media accounts or by visiting the Assembly Democratic Caucus website. I'm Alexis Manzania with Look West. Thank you for listening. The Look West podcast is produced by California Assembly Democrats. When you think of Californian politics, remember to look west.